Hello scrappers and planet lovers, Tin Man here with another video. So today what I want to do is take apart this early 1960s Viking TV. I actually found this TV in a dumpster about a week ago. I ended up fishing it out of there. And unfortunately it doesn't work. I have done some research on this TV. Very difficult to find parts uh, if you can find them at all. So unfortunately this is going to be scrapped. And the nice thing about all TVs like this or your just regular CRT TVs is they are 100% scrappable. Regardless of the wood here, I can bring this in and get e-waste price. This weighs 90 pounds as is, so that's definitely great. Diverting it from the landfill for sure is an excellent thing. However, before I bring it in, there are a couple things I do want to get out of there. There is always a nice copper yoke. Um, there's going to be some tin some brass and unfortunately for me considering I don't deal with old TVs like this, this is my first not sure what other goodies I'm gonna find so gonna take it apart uh, would love some comments from viewers on parts I apologize if I don't know all of the different parts that are on there but uh, again gonna open it up take out the goodies that I know separate as best I can Important diverting this from the landfill, of course, and maximizing your profits. So I've already taken the back off. So any one of my viewers that maybe had one of these or their parents did, this is your uh, Viking TV from Eaton Company in Canada. Um, and I have seen some research on early or late 1950s, early 60s. And the reason I say this is 1960s is because when I turn it around, It has a sticker right here that says warranty, uh, limited warranty, uh, expires April 1966. So definitely an oldie, uh, some really cool components in here. As I said, I don't know what all these things are. There's some light bulb types of items. Uh, but here, just like your common CRT, beautiful copper yoke. I have a nice transformer here. As well, underneath my circuit board, if I put a magnet to it, I do have some tin here. Um, I have also removed the screws, some of them. These screws I will put into my tin or shred pile as well. So again, I'm gonna just start taking some of the things off of here. I do wanna make sure, even though I've checked it doesn't work, it hasn't been charged or what have you, I still wanna make sure that I cut the cord that goes to the uh, tube. There's always in the 80s, 90s styles, the red coil or red tube pipe. This one is white. Um, so now that I've cut it, I always used rubberized handles. There is no charge or any potential charge. Um, so we're going to first actually take off the yoke here. Just pop the cap. There is actually no screws on this one, but usually you can just kind of slide it off and going to cut the wire. There's some really nice wire here, but look at that. Nice copper yoke I have here. I do have to break that open, hitting it with a hammer. Uh, and I'm not going to do that on this video. I am going to do it on a different one. I have a whole bunch of them um, saved up. But as you can see, scratch that. There is all number two copper in there. And very easy to do. All I do is break it with a hammer. So there's going to be two um, funnel parts. There are going to be some coils that go around inside of here. And as well, there is some magnetic um, stuff on here. Um, I always throw it into my tin pile. Um, I know someone said it is um, um, magnesium, I think, or, or uh, pyrite, I not pyrite, sorry. Um, something else, pyrite is not that, that's fool's gold. Uh, but it is some type of metallic item that I will throw into my tin. So this is definitely a good one. And the number two copper right now that you see here is currently going in London, Ontario for $3.32 a pound Canadian. So gonna get almost a pound there. So that is definitely great. I also have right here, I'm just gonna take up the last screw. I have a beautiful transformer that I need to cut the wires to. This transformer, there is a category at a scrapyard for transformers. This is going to have copper inside of it. This would give me, right now, transformers in London, Ontario. These types that are copper spooled are going for about 54 cents a pound uh, in Canada, London. 
So that is great. However, for me, it is well worth my time to break it open and get the nice copper out of here. Um, I do actually have a separate video on taking out copper from transformers. Um, I just actually did one like this, obviously not as old as this one, but you can see this will have some great tin pieces to it, some beautiful copper as well. Uh, if you're interested in knowing how to take that off, again, go check out that video on transformers. But these plates, once I remove the shell here, there's going to be a protective case here on there with the fins. It's just screws and bolts. Take those off. These are going to have plates. And how these transformers works is they always have almost like an E-style. The plates will intertwine so you just have to pull them off usually I use a pry or a flathead screwdriver or and a pry um, bar type of uh, tool something like this and I will be able to remove the copper but the nice thing is is you are going to get a lot more money from the copper and tin separating them than you are for the transformer as I said my last video I just proved that you're almost doubling it from the copper that you have sometimes so definitely a great thing, get that inner copper out of there and you can still throw the rest of it into tin. So you are not losing any money from this. You're just separating it and it's very easy to do. So a nice transformer here, move this. Now I'm getting into unfamiliar territory. Unfortunately, I do have to remove this uh, box here as well as this tin piece to get to the capacitors. I do also want to mention, just going to cut some of this wire here just to show you. This wire is going to be classified. I'm looking inside that's copper. So this is actually going to be classified in London, Ontario as your 60% appliance wire. And currently right now, this is going for $2.67 a pound. There is definitely not a pound in my hand here. There might be five or six ounces running through this. But again, it's a nice thing to store up. I throw it into a bag. And you definitely want to make sure you separate this from your other, your 40% appliance wire. So regular TVs, I'm just going to actually get a plug right now just to compare it. Okay, so my regular 80s, 90s CRTs usually have an appliance cord that goes to the wall. This does not have one, but this would be classified, this appliance wire would classify this 40% wire. And that's because scrap yards, in order to classify it, they look at two things, copper to plastic ratio and copper recovery. Because these are single stranded and one coating of plastic, there's more copper to this. This one, however, you can see the two strands inside of copper, but it has an additional outer coating on it. So it's gonna have more plastic, less copper recovery. And this right now is your 40% appliance wire and currently going for $1.60 or $1.59 in London, Ontario. So $1.59, $2.67. So definitely want to separate it. And again, appliance wire, an excellent thing, comes on all electronics and appliances now that we plug in. This one, as I said, doesn't have it because there is no plug in, but it definitely has wire inside of it. So that's great. Last thing I need to do here is make sure I wanna get this off. And I am gonna leave this intact, by the way. And unfortunately, I'm looking at this. This does not have a degaussing cable. Degaussing cable is your black, just gonna get one right here. So this is a circuit board actually from the 80s and 90s CRTs. And what it usually has on them is the degaussing cable that goes around the tube. So it looks something like this. And these obviously are very important, great source of copper. Once I cut it open, you look inside of it, you can see the copper color in there. If I was to cut this and it reveals a metallic look, it means that it is aluminum wire. So definitely wanna make sure you separate it. But this is copper. And unfortunately, this one does not have it. Um, but again, your regular CRTs definitely get that degaussing cable. Uh, and check if it's copper. You're also gonna find it on your older computer monitors. So this does not have that. Um, but I'm gonna quickly just take out my last bolt here. See if I can raise this. 
I was really hoping when I took the back off here that maybe there'd be some money or something. Sometimes people store things, you know, kind of like their own little uh, vault, if you will. But it didn't happen. So very easy to take this out. Now I'm just going to cut some of this wire. And I will start looking at some of these pieces. I'm going to bring this circuit board up to the camera just to show you. Okay, there's some more tin in the back here. But I want to just get these off of here. So I can remove this casing. There we go. All right. So my wire, lots of wire actually on this part, which is nice. There. Okay. So again, here is my circuit board. I'm going to flip it over. Look at that circuit board there. So I have right here another transformer. That transformer again. This one does have copper, I can see the copper inside if I twist it. Right down there, you can see the copper spool. Uh, there's some good tin there, right there. There's the copper spool, you can kind of see glistening in the light. I have a couple MLCCs here, and what I'm gonna do is I actually wanna break that MLCC off. There's a couple of them here. There is also some really nice little spools of copper here that you can see. I am gonna pick these off of here, of course. This, I think, is tin, but I'm just gonna pull one of these MLCCs off of here just to verify something. Um, I was doing a little bit of research on MLCCs, and some of them are, the reason they are so valuable, is because they will contain palladium. And what I do have to make sure, though, however, is they have to be non-magnetic. So this is for anyone that is into micro-scrapping, old circuit boards, even your old TV monitors here. This will have a couple different MLCCs on it down there. There's smaller ones. You can see it underneath the, uh, this is your silver oscillator. This does also come off for me. They contain a little bit of silver. But you can see the small MLCCs. And in order to see if they are the good ones or not, Putting a magnet to it, the good ones are non-magnetic. So that, as you can see, right there, there it is, is non-magnetic. The ones that you see now currently in circuit boards are magnetic. So apparently the ones that are non-magnetic have the potential for palladium. Um, again, it's entirely up to the type of scrapper you are. If you micro scrap, some people take them, they will sell them online um, as, well, as well as their... Um, um, little uh, square ones, if you will. But uh, for me, I don't take all of them um, because, as I said, you have to have a buyer. It definitely takes an extremely a long amount of time to collect them, and they are becoming a lot less um, um, you know, available for you. So it all depends on the person you are. Uh, I also can see right here, there is some really nice brass, yellow brass there, some brass there. And these are all connecting to these, I believe these are gonna be aluminum. I have to pick one of these off. I have to check. There we go, just pull it off. Inside of this, I'm gonna get my magnet. So that is aluminum. So I, I wanna say these are probably gonna be aluminum heat sinks. So some nice aluminum here. I got one, two, three, four. Um, these aluminum capacitors, I do not pull these off, these capacitors. They do contain aluminum. Uh, the shell. However, when you open them up, they do contain some oils, um, especially the modern ones. These ones, I'm not sure, but I imagine they do. Uh, but underneath here, I'm not sure what this thing is, but this is really cool. You can see the light bulbs here, uh, the different or light bulb styles. This, as I said, is going to be tin shred. And I may actually, once I remove the brass out of here and the transformer, I may actually just, yeah, I can just throw it right into my tin shred as is. Um, this is very heavy. This is probably good seven, eight pounds. And again, at 10 cents a pound, gonna make a lot more. And the beauty of this TV is that I do not have to remove the wood. I'm just gonna close it back up once I'm done. I do leave the speakers in. Um, actually, no, I won't. These are heavy metal ones. I'm gonna look at it. You can see them in the back here. Sometimes if they are the smaller ones, I will leave them in, but these ones are nice and heavy. I will throw those into my tin. 
There is a small strand of copper inside of them, very small, but I throw that into my number two copper. But these are gonna add to my tin price. Um, but again, I am gonna leave this tube on here. There is lead in here. Um, there is right up here another type of box that is um, gonna be part of the control dial. So I am gonna further look at that up here, but it is tin, so definitely gonna be tin. There's probably gonna be a couple small spools of copper in it, but very easy to take this apart. Definitely some common items that you will find from your 80s and 90s CRTs, but for me, the money makers, obviously, the transformer, the copper yoke, the aluminum capacitors here, or covers, as well as some of the, another transformer and brass. And again, some of these parts, again, I don't know what they are. I would love the scrapping community to reach out and let me know, especially if you are from this era, maybe this is nostalgic for you, um, but definitely help me identify some of these parts. Unfortunately, as I said, someone is gonna say that uh, they're sad to see this go into the garbage. It could have been sold online. I did do a number of uh, hours of research, looking up parts, looking up how to sell that. But again, the people that bought these were finding extremely hard to find working parts um, and in order to make it workable. So again, scrapped it, gonna bring the rest of the scrap yard, another item diverted from the landfill, some awesome copper inside and parts. Um, hopefully you enjoyed that, it was a quick one. But again, I do not get many of these and I'm sure this is not gonna be a very helpful tutorial for all of my viewers. It's gonna be more of just, a, like I said, memory lane there, looking at the parts and seeing what history had for us uh, way before your wireless TV. So again, hope you enjoyed the video. Please comment down below, like, share, subscribe, and I'll catch you on the next one. Tin Man out.